it's trial by stone. So, okay, so first and foremost, um, lighting, yeah, it's, it's kind of screwy. Um, I have a light bulb that's out on the other side of the room, so it's going to be, it's, it's different than usual. Um, also, um, yeah, I haven't posted in a while, but I will be hopefully getting back to a little bit of the schedule. Um, I'm going to try to post maybe every two, maybe every three days. Yeah, and I might post more than one video. I'm thinking about maybe doing another one tonight. But anyway, so tonight I am talking about Videodrome, which is one of my favorite movies. It was, um, it was released in 1983. It was directed by David Cronenberg of the Fly Flame of the Fly Fame. He also directed The Brood. I believe that was his first movie. And um, Scanners and Crash, a few others. He's um, pretty pretty well known. He's he's pretty cool. He's mainly known for his body horror and his sci-fi weirdness. Um, yeah, he's kind of he started out as kind of an underground director and was as time has gone on, he's kind of become known as this really cool cult director that um, fans just kind of pass around his movies underground to be like, hey, yeah, check this out. Um, so, Videodrome stars James Woods. James Woods is weird. I did not know his name has two S's in it. That is, that is odd. Nothing against James Woods. Just, yeah. Anyway, um, and, it, and Debbie Harry of Blondie fame. So that's interesting. Um, it was also it was scored by Howard Shore, which has done has went on to do a lot of things. Uh, most notably, Lord of the Rings did did the score for that. And it is set in Toronto during the early 1980s. I also have a script for this one, a pseudo script. But anyway, it was set in, in Toronto during the early 1980s. It follows the CEO of a small UHF television station who stumbles upon a broadcast signal fig featuring violence and torture. The layers of deception and mind control conspiracy unfolds as he uncovers a signal source and loses touch with reality in a series of increasingly bizarre hallucinations. It is very cool. So, I was kind of always aware of this film for a while when I was like really getting into horror movies. I kind of, I don't know, I stumbled across it on YouTube and... I don't know. It was there's something about it that was just really appealing to me. I and I really don't know why because I mean, yeah, the practical effects are great, which are done by Rick Baker, the great Rick Baker, of um, the thing. No, 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 American Werewolf in London. Even American Werewolf in London. Um, yeah, he, which is also a fantastic film with crazy, crazy good special effects. Um, so yeah, the special effects on this are great. However compared to some of Cronenberg's other movies, it's really, it's kind of, there isn't, there isn't nearly as much, it's a lot more <laughs> subtle, if you will, even though this is not a very subtle movie, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting, so I was always really drawn to just crazy special effects, like stuff on the fly, however, I don't think it was the special effects that really hooked me with this, I think it was I don't know the the story like this this just this guy who runs his TV station just comes across this I don't know this just film that is giving people tumors and it's just intoxicating in this horrible way like it it's fascinating it's it almost goes to that um, that idea of like how as humans were just attracted to violence which I assume which I can agree with in some way in some ways like like why do a lot of people like action movies or to my extent horror movies like because I mean it's it's a it's a relief it's a way to it's another world to transport yourself in so it's interesting to see um, them go about this in like this very um, just extreme way and um yeah it's 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 just really interesting and and taboo which <laughs> makes you even more curious about it i think that was another thing about it for me and one second i just want to point out i have this awesome criterion 
DVD. I typically typically try to get the um, Blu-rays for everything, but yes, this is my awesome Criterion uh, DVD I have of it. Yeah, along with the new flesh. It's very cool. Um, I just had to get it because I'm a big fan of just how my collection looks, like, and just the whole VHS format is just really cool. Because it totally fits a movie. And this was a big movie that was driven by, like, like many of the, um, like many cult horror movies in the 80s that were really driven by the VHS cover, which is, <laughs> which is interesting. Like, stuff like The Stuff, which is just an excellent example of just a crazy VHS cover, or cover for your VHS, that would just grip you and be like, wow, that is crazy, like, for, like, with the stuff, it literally says warning, <laughs> like, that's, that's just a heck of a way to get someone to watch your movie, and I'm sure, I'm definitely sure that that's how video drama has become such a classic over the years, and, because it was, when it first came out in 83, it really wasn't looked at too well, it, it was thought to be extreme and weird, like, dude has a orifice on his chest, and it's, <laughs> it's weird, um, he kisses the TV, it's an odd movie, it's a very odd movie, but I love it for that, and it's, it's one that definitely takes multiple viewings to really appreciate as much, like, it's very similar to me in the same way that Blade Runner was like that for me, and even The Shining to an extent, but where I was like, there's, I, I watched it, and I, I, if, I didn't really get a whole lot out of it, but I was like, there's just something about it where I'm like, that is just really, really interesting. And 2001 was the same way. Um, and I, it was, I was just like watching it and just like, it was just not, ex like, you know, you're in a movie and you're watching a movie, or this is how it is for me at least, where you're just like, you're in the movie. And with like, with like those four films, 2001, The Shining, Videodrome, Blade Runner, I just wasn't really like, I, I wasn't really all there, but at the same time, I totally like, it was like, there's seriously something about this that I'm just not getting. And after the movie was over, I was like, man, that was really weird. I don't know what I watched, but I think I liked it. And as m the more I've watched these films, Videodrome in particular, I, I've just grown to love them. Like, I really, really love video drum, and I I typically like to um, watch the film directly before I review it. However, I literally just showed my brother this the other day, and I was like, I, f I feel like I've seen this enough, and I know enough about it to just kind of freehand talk about it, so here we are. But, um, but yeah, um, yeah, I don't know. It's just a really, really interesting film, and the... It also goes along with the whole, um, uh, well, one of my favorite quotes in the movie, which really kind of sums up the thesis of the movie as, whole, as a whole, is, television is the retina of the mind's eye, which is said by um, the character Brian Oblivion. And by the way, all the names in this film are great. Max Wren is James Wood's character. It's, I just love that character name. It's so cool. It's, it's just one of those that instantly has that, like, iconic feel to it. Um... Same with <laughs> Brian Oblivion. That's such an odd name. Like his literal, like his his middle name is just O. <laughs> Brian Oblivion. <laughs> it's great. It's like Edward Enigma. But um, but yeah, it's it's just really cool and creative. But um, but yeah, it just I. It, yeah, it goes right along with the whole um the idea of the like boundary between, and the boundary and the line that crosses, um, like, machine and man. Like, similar to films like Akira and Tetsuo the Iron Man. And it's, it's very cool. It's, it's very interesting. Well, those take a, either a sci-fi action, just anime approach, or a very extreme cyberpunk weird, um, Asia Extreme approach. This one takes a more subtle, again, not a very subtle movie, but it, it is more subtle 
in the way that it just it handles these themes and it's got some very cool imagery i really love the scene where max has the um they're trying to so video drone when you watch it will give you hallucinations it's like the ring where you start like things just start happening to you like when you watch video drone it gives you this tumor and you start to hallucinate things and they just get worse and worse and worse so him and his and his tv friends they are like okay we're gonna take this machine and hook it up to your head <laughs> and it looks really goofy but it's really really cool and howard shore in the scene entirely well basically okay so yeah so they're gonna take this machine put it to his head and like record his hallucinations it's it's really cool and weird and the movie starts crossing into these boundaries where you just can't tell what is a hallucination and what is not and it's it's very cool it's very open-ended open-ended in that way where you can just make your own assumptions and i really like films like that um but yeah that scene is just whenever I, that's that's one of the scenes that i first think about whenever i, I think about the video drum is a scene where he's hooked up to this machine with on his head it's like cerebro from x-men but it's just it's so it's it's goofy but kind of harrowing in that in a, in a very different way and it's just it's cool like howard shore's score definitely elevates the scene and i just i really like it it's just really really cool um i i like this movie in completely different ways than i like other cult horror movies like hellraiser and reanimator in a, in a very very different way and it's one that like i said it took a couple of viewings for me to really 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 start to love but <clears throat> i always really appreciated it and i respected it and i really really love video gem it's a very cool movie and i really suggest watching it if you're into um cool practical effects because there definitely are some great special effects rick baker is as always, he's on top of his game. It's it's great. Specifically towards the end, there's one scene. It's just whoo, whoo, is is disturbing and cool. Um, yeah, I love it. But um, yeah, it's got some great special effects. The acting's all really good. I think it's very underrated in that way. I think uh, James Woods gives a gives a pretty it gives a very interesting performance. <laughs> For if nothing else, it's 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 very interesting and. Again, it's 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 very subtle. It's a very subtle performance. A scene when he's talking to Debbie Harry and Brian Oblivion on the talk show is just is very cool, and it really shows a lot about his character, even though it's he's not doing a whole a whole lot. Um, and yeah, it's 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 just it's a really cool film. I it's it might it's probably not my favorite Cronenberg film. I haven't watched scanners all the way through and i haven't mean to get around to watching the brood but i haven't yet but i adore the fly so it's it's between the fly and videodrome i kind of kind of want to say i like videodrome more but i don't know the fly is just the fly is just so freaking good um but yeah um that is this is my review for videodrome i'd probably give it a probably give it an eight eight out of ten it sounds it sounds about right um yeah, because it, it is definitely a weird movie, and it does drag in a few places, but overall, if <laughs> if you're the type of fan who likes, or if you're the type of person who likes pulling random 80s VHS tapes out of a blockbuster, <laughs> if you go to that that last blockbuster, wherever the heck that, that place is, and you just pull it off the shelf, and you're like, wow, this is a really weird cover, I wonder what this movie is. You'll probably like it. Um, yeah. So that was Video Drum. Um, just try by stone. Peace.